Welcome everybody to another episode of the Irish Success Podcast, where we invite extremely successful people in their trade and we ask them questions. How did they do it? See, let's see if we can pick their brains a little bit. So today we have Trevor from Ashburn Paven, an extremely successful guy who's doing Paven, and let's hear some of his stories. So Trevor, how are you? Good, Lucas. Thanks for asking me up here. Um, <laughs> we have a few funny stories maybe <laughs> let's, from, let's from kick it. Starting, and see, let, let's see if people can learn from your experience because you're extremely successful at what you do. Yeah. So tell us, what do you do? Like, what what aspects of, of paving Wait, do you so do? So we do a lot of um, paving walks, ground walks, you know. We do custom-made sheds. Like, But most of our work is in the paving industry. Yeah. You know, we do commercial, we do site walks, we do private walks, we do every all aspects of the paving and ground Walks, you know? How big are you? Like, how many staff? We, okay, we, we, we staff, vans, and equipment. We have like six vans, you know, five vans walk every day. And we have a kind of spare van there, so when something goes wrong, we use that. So we have six vans on the road. We have about 15 employees. We subcontract them walk to about five or six employees as well. You know, we have contracts. Some, we have one contract there. It's worth over a, one and a half million euro. Jesus, that's y- big. You know, yeah, we're on there for a couple of years. We know a couple of years to go. You know, we have a couple, of, couple of three and four hundred grand contracts. We look, we do a lot of work. You know, and, and we do, we take a lot of pride on our work. We do private work as well. We go to people's houses, and we're very, 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 very well known in the in the industry of the private work because the phone never stops ringing. You know, and we yeah. take pride in our work. I mean, we put our our hands on the business about people say you're crazy you should be taking it easy and all but for me i like being in there personally with the customers talking to them yeah and, i like and that sort of stuff out like that. that's that's what we do you know and now you know if you think you're going to work eight to five and be successful you have another thing coming <laughs> you know what I mean? big one yeah you know like that's that's the reason of this podcast i want to show people what the real doers do like people yeah. like you how many hours a day, a day do you work right, like? so my daily routine is i get up at five o'clock you 5 a.m. Same as me. 5 a.m. every morning. I'm out of that bed. Now, I do a little bit of maybe invoicing or, or quotations early morning. I hit the gym for 6 to 7. I go to work. Every day? Every single day. Well I done. go to work at, se- at 7 o'clock. We leave at 7. The van's loaded up at 7. We go. We start at half 7 every day. We finish at half or 5 o'clock. That's grand. The lads can go home and relax. I go home. I have six kids, by the way. <laughs> Four under ten. Okay? <laughs> so, I go home and I have to, sometimes I have to work and I have to leave the house to go out and do all my invoice and people ring me for photographs, f- um, videos, mm. um, slabs, what do we do, how we do it. So, like last night at half ten, eleven o'clock, I was still walking. You know, and I, I yeah. have time for the kids, and then when they go to bed, yeah. I do a bit of walk because yeah. I want to be successful and I want to keep you this go. going. You know there you mean? go. I absolutely you know? love that, and people should learn from this alone. You know, people think that when they work somewhere and they they say that they want to start their own business, and they think that they're gonna work eight hours a day and they're gonna become anything. That's bollocks. It is bullshit. You know. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. There's no such a thing. There. I don't know one successful person who works eight hours a day. No. I don't. I no. said I don't. Maybe some people who already have established business, then yeah. after ten years, then they can put on put it into slow motion. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. at the start, you have to prepare yourself for financial hell and a lot of work. Yeah, like my brother is a, is a part of my business, there, and he's the very same. Like we're texting each other sometimes five in the morning, it's ten at <laughs> night, eleven o'clock at night. What about this job? There's a lot of logistics involved with machinery <coughs> and moving around stuff, and a lot of stuff goes on behind the scenes. Like everyone's like, oh, it's just a paving job. Do a driveway, do a back garden, or go to a site but you have to have logistics involved as you know with vans and machinery yeah. and all the stuff organized you know right so let's get to the funny interesting stuff right right so if somebody is watching us right now and they want to become successful at what you do how did you start like you know how you know how people want to know how do you right. start from being an employee working for somebody to owning my own empire what are the first steps what did you do how did you okay move? this is this is kind of uh ironic to ask that question because it's very funny because I started out when I was 17 doing this, okay? You were already working 17. 17 yeah. When I was 17, I'm not very intelligent academically, okay? But I have this work ethic about me that, you know, not many people have. My brother has it as well. And when we started out, we started out with my old boss in doing the paving and doing block <coughs> lane in this company. And every day I'd look at them around and I'd say, like, he's got this and he's got that. I want that and I want <laughs> this. And how did he do it? So I fucking walked my balls off. So he'd say, do you want to do overtime? Everyone else would say, no. Me and my brother would say, yeah. 
all the, all the overtime you want. So I'd done the overtime. I learned the skill very, very quickly. I had my own crew in that, in that business within a year and a half and sold me brother and I had very, very good bosses. And he, he, he had this work ethic that I liked about them. And I grasped hold of it and I walked and walked and walked so hard, 12 hour shifts, 12 hour shifts for about five or six years. And then when I was 26, the, the point came where, you know, yourself, the point comes where I, I can do everything in this whole business. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? I can, I can do this stuff. And But how but, long did you, you work know, for somebody until for about, you opened until your own about 20, 26, from 18, 17 to 26, I worked with someone in in this in the in the paving industry and the, and the building. I, they put me through my trade block lane But as there well. you go. You need you know? to become extremely good. This is oh. what people don't get. You have to become extremely good working for somebody else. And when you reach the p highest point, then you start your own business. Exactly. You, you can't be pricking around and not knowing what you do and then do your own like, thing. I made sure that I knew everything about the business, block lane and construction and the paving and all the concrete and everything that goes with the business, you know. <coughs> and and um, the funny story was, like, I was I was down building this wall on that lawn and I was busting me bollocks laying about 440 blo blocks a day and this fella comes up to me and says to me, yeah, Jay, you must be earning about three grand a week down that area. And I was looking at him going, no, why? He goes, because you're absolutely nailing them blocks. You are you fucking crazy? And that got me thinking. Like, a year before that, I was thinking of it anyway. But that got me thinking. You know, I can be making more money doing this. You know, and what do I have to do? And to be honest with you, that night I asked the boss for petrol money to go down to, to, to Longford to do the wall, and he goes, "No, you're not getting any petrol money." And the next day, I handed him my notice. So that was that was, your, listen, that was your tipping point. This is the funny point, right? So I had no business ahead of me. I said, I handed him my notice, going, I'm going out on my own. I had no van, I had no fucking tills. No plan, just going ahead for a Right, but a fella, a mate of mine, who was working for this paver, for this big builder, he was he was still working for today, he um, gave me a number across, and you know, then I get, when I gave him my notice, my boss said to me, I don't want you to live with a subcontract off me. I said, yeah, of course I will. So I was getting an hourly rate to go off them. So we started then, 12 hours a day, seven days a week for the first few years. And then my brother came on board after a few weeks. And uh, we just, this is a f how funny how, how it works. Like, you know, so I was subcontracting off my old boss, which is Grant. I got this <coughs> fluky job because my mate was working in with this company and they gave me about 250 grand contract for this job uh, at the start. Then I sent the lads onto this site Right one day, it's so funny, and, and it, this is how oh, I wouldn't have made it. I was running there after a few months, I was running there a walk because I didn't know walk, like you know. And <laughs> I just took this big chance, and then um, I sent the lads onto a site, and they went into this site, and they went in, and they walked for the whole day. And I got a phone call at the end of the day, Hello, who are you? I says, I'm Trevor, and he goes, well, I don't, I've, no, I've no Trevor Ashbourne Paven walking in this company in this business today. He says, Um, you're in the wrong job. <laughs> so I rang the lads. <laughs> What the f where the fuck are you? They went to the wrong they job. They went to the wrong job. <laughs> right? I swear to God. But your man rings me up. But you know something? I like that walk. Any chance you can stay and do the rest of the contract. So you sent it. So the guys went to the wrong job. They yeah. started working, but the guy liked your job and he said, would you stay? Yeah. So, so then I got the two jobs next door to each other. And then that's when I got an extra van and an extra crew. Because you, need to, you, you needed to expand. And and to this day, I still work for this company. No way. And they give me between two and three hundred grand a year in contracts. And this is labour only, you know, contracts they gave me, you know. And, and I still work for them to this day, you know. And they've changed the ownership and, and all that sort of stuff. But they still give me work to this day. But that's how fluky I was, you know, getting into this, getting <coughs> the, the work. But I had this attitude and walk out so when i went onto a site and i met a farm and i met someone and talked to them and they see me walk after one day they always they always got me back if that makes sense mm. i went in and i fucking nailed it you know and i walked so hard and i got it done very very quickly but very very professionally quality and very work skillful. on time at yeah. fair price and they and once and i always say this and if any tips for anyone out there never go in over pricing jobs because you won't get them or if you do get them, they won't ask you back. Because at the end of the day, the quantity surveyors want ch cheap work because they have a certain package to give you. Now, they won't give it to the cheapest, of course. But So when I'm pricing jobs, I price them keenly just so I make sure I get them, you know? Yeah. And well, It's the work ethic that I always talk about. Like, me and my brother, um, Darren, and we have it, like, you know, and we've had it all through the whole, through all the, all the work we've done. When we start the job and we're on the job, that company always, always gave us the next job. Mm. If that makes sense but it took a lot of years and a lot of hard work to get where we are today you know and we and we talk about the recession if you want to like 
You know? People people don't get look, even if a recession doesn't happen, which I don't think is true, I think it's around the corner, but even if it doesn't happen, what's stopping people from preparing for it? Mm. I know I know you started your TikTok, you mm. started doing yeah, videos, yeah, you're yeah. already preparing for it and you're That's just recession proof. Yeah. I'm not looking to be I'm not <coughs> on that looking to look good or to and I'm on that to recession proof my business. Exactly. I mean Buller's business, you Everybody know. Everybody should be like you, you, yeah, know? you know. Because even if nothing happens, what is the big deal? You're just gonna get yourself loads of calls yeah. and then you can exclude the low profit work and just jump into the high exactly. profit work the more exactly. calls you get the more work uh, Trevor tell us could you tell our listeners is there any way that you can tell them that, what like how do people find jobs or how do you get jobs you're probably working uh, it's probably word them out that you're in your business at this stage because you have so many years experience behind you but if somebody's starting out there and they want to be successful like how what tips would you give them how do you get jobs how, like see it's different now than it was years ago years ago it was all you work hard your name got around. Nowadays, it's social media, isn't it? Mm. You know, so lucky enough, me and me, but I never really had to pay social media for anything. Mm. We just got to work because we have, we're out there like 20 years now doing this, you know, sorry, more. I'm 18, I'm 46. Yes, I'm nearly 40 years doing 28 years doing this job. So, but starting out now these days, you have to get on social media. You have to get on TikTok. Yeah. You have to get and on people, Instagram. Look, and you are, a, you are a brilliant you know? example because you are a guy in your 40s. You don't know what the hell TikTok is. You don't mm. know how to edit stuff. But you approached a company and you told them, listen, guys, teach me how to do this. I'm a guy in my 40s. I don't know how to do this. Yeah. Teach me. Yeah. And people think that they're too old. Just because they don't know how to use it, they say, that's mm. it. But what the fuck is the problem with learning how to use yeah. it? Like my brother is... Um, I was kind of, I'll do all the work. I'm really kind of hard work. I went into the graft. And he was, he was the clever one that he started the social media and Facebook years ago. And, and we've got 14 or 14,000 followers on that. And we've got unbelievable response to our Facebook as well. And, you know, he was clever in that way. And I was, I was kind of going, yeah, we'll go for it. And he went for it. And, but we never really paid them much money, to be honest with you. We just got to work, you know. But we, us, it's the work ethic for me. If you have a work ethic and you have an attitude and you go on to a job with that work ethic and that attitude, people will love the way you're doing the job. They love the way you are and yeah. they'll always, get, they'll you always back. get you back. And they'll tell their friends about <coughs> you. And like granny, look, we've done great grandfathers, the grannies, the sons, the sisters, their kids, all in one families. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Sometimes you do three next door neighbours together. You, do you know what I'm saying to you? That's you know, how, that's like how this, quality you know? work spreads. Yeah. Could we talk a little bit about the structure of your business? Because yeah. you mentioned that you have a brother working yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah. So you are the grafter and he is the paperwork. He, is that the way yeah, it is? Yeah, he, he does most. He does all the, kind of the, the paperwork stuff. You know, I like to do the grafting kind of stuff. Now, yeah. we, I do a bit of that as well. Like We do our own. Like every, yeah. every Saturday we're out pricing. Without fail. Yeah, but this you know, is also what I want to tell the listeners. You know, you know, every company needs at least two superstars. Yeah. So you are a superstar at the crafting, doing it with your hands. But company cannot work with one superstar. There needs to be another guy behind it. Yeah. Who you can who you can call. Listen, send an invoice to this guy. Listen, what's the story with this? Can you do a research on this? Uh, nobody ever built a great company on their own. Is that true? That that is very true. Without my brother. I wouldn't be here today. You, you wouldn't know. be where you are. Oh, no way. And, and he so, wouldn't be where he is. You know, yeah. well, I'm a very, very successful in what we do. And, yeah. you know, we, we, we accumulated a lot a lot of work and a lot of success, in, yeah. you know, over the years. Now, don't get me wrong. I went through the last recession, don't forget, yeah. when we had nothing. Yeah. Literally had nothing. Yeah. We had no <laughs> work, but we survived. We just kept going and kept plugging away and kept trying. And, and you know, and we ended up with no work at the time and everyone was ripping us off because no one was getting paid. Yeah. I, I went through all that. I remember it. I mean, mate, I've done the big, oh, I bought all the houses and the fancy cars and the properties abroad. We've done all that years ago in the, in the first film. Yeah. You know, but so this time, we, well, you're much <laughs> you're, more you're clever. You're a little bit clever. Yeah, yeah. You, know, <laughs> you know, we save all our money now and, and, we, and we kind of invest it in other stuff, you know, mm. to, to, for, to a session for, for our future, you know, all mm. that sort of stuff, you know. What, what is the biggest job that you've ever done? Um, well, And how did you get that job? <laughs> Well, we've done some very, very big jobs. Like, well, well honest, as I said, I'm on a site at the moment, and it's worth about a million and a half. A million and a, a, million a half, and a half contract and for paving. Now, that's big, guys. That's guys, whoever is listening and watching this, two, one and a half million for a paving contract, that's big. <laughs> well, that's labour only. That's labour only, so labor the material is probably double that's that. That's not material, so <laughs> discipline of materials. And look, we've, done, like, we've done good contracts, like Hilaire Village, 
we've had a massive contract down there. It was, it was, I don't know, it was fifteen or sixteen thousand square meters or whatever, whatever was in it. And um, we've done Kildare Village. We've done like you know, we've done a lot of big, 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 big uh, contracts. We've done banks and we've done big commercial jobs, five, six, ten thousand square meters. We've done jobs, you know, a lot, a lot of big work like that. Every all around Dublin, you know, you know, so. It's good, you know, mm. it's good. How do you get through the winter? Because as far as I'm concerned, a lot of people say that the paving would be more of a seasonal work. People no, don't. it's not. We Everyone says to me, you know, oh, I suppose you're doing nothing in the winter. You know, we, we're not. We, we, we walk through. Um, I never have to let go any of my lads. You know what I mean? Never. Same I, as here. Same as here. People, I, I, people say that to me as well. I walk the hallway trail. Oh, t- first of December, we, we're busy. We're busy the whole way through, you know, mm. we've, we've, because we've got a good, good, <coughs> successful name out there, you know. Yeah. And, and I, I would like to touch on the topic of having somebody else in the company in order for the company to work great. Yeah. So I'll tell you a quick story of when I got Henry yeah. in my business. You know what I mean? Because my business was only turning three hundred and fifty grand a year, the roofing one. Mm. But the moment I employed Henry, Henry is the right man. He's managing the business now, and we wrote on the board behind that curtain the goals for the next year, and we turned over one and a half million the next year as soon as Henry started with me and the next year we turned over two and a half million and that would never be possible for me to do it on my own yeah. never because I'm like yourself I'm good at the grafting I'm good with working with my hands I'm good at managing but I'm not good at the paperwork when it comes to sending an invoice when it comes to doing some bloody data <laughs> sheets or uh, you know a safety statement oh, I feel oh, pain. yeah it's a nightmare so I needed somebody and I found the right guy and that's when things exploded yeah. and that's what I want to tell people as well if you are building a business and you're on your own and you're struggling with these things employ somebody mm. it's not gonna be easy you need to find somebody who you trust you need to find somebody who is a doer and who gets up at 5 a.m mm. well, isn't, to- that the, isn't that well, what I it t- is totally agree with you you know you know um for me you know me brother does all that sort of stuff he kind of looks after it you know the, the I wouldn't say the quotes the bill of quantities for jobs but we we also un- employ consultants to do this sort of stuff like we need a consultant to get the to get the um the truck look li- um, license there like you have the, your own truck as yeah, well. Yeah, we have. When did you buy that truck? We bought that truck oh, about two years ago. You know, is that a and, grab uh, truck? It's a grab truck. Yeah, not a lot, not a lot of paving companies have their own trucks, do they? No, <laughs> it's, it's it was a lot a lot of money, a big investment. But it was my idea. What you was know, that? I want to say that with Damon's listening, it was my idea to buy the truck. <laughs> 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 it was his idea to do on Facebook. It was my idea to buy the truck, and I done the figures out one day, and I put it on the paper for him, and I showed him the figures, and he looked at it and went. Mm, I'm liking that. <laughs> you know, we are, we are, you can obviously buy stuff yourself a lot cheaper, you know, buying in bulk, you know, sort of stuff. So it was a great investment and it, it works very, very well for us, you know. Yeah, how much was that truck if you don't mind? I think it was 68000 for the truck, but the maintenance on it is probably 10000 10, a year, you know. It's a, yeah, it's like oh, see, a lot of stuff, broken pipes and stuff like that, and punctures and tires and all that sort of stuff. Like the diesel to fill it alone is 400 euro a day. You know, really, four hundred yeah. euro a day to fill yeah, a truck. Yeah, to fill it up, you know, but it's good, you know. D- lovely. And do you do any work for other companies, or do you, do, does the truck just serve you, or do you well, do most of the time it's just for us? You know, the odd time you get a bill. Really? Like so you would have that much work. So yeah, the truck just well, does. It, it does we have a couple of builders there. The ringers can take a load away. And we send them in, and we, and, and we get the load away. So it, it, it does make some money as well. You know, mm. you know, it impressive. Does. It's he's, he's busy every single day. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. It's 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 well worth. So it was a risky thing. decision, but it made sense. It was a risky end. decision at the time because we haven't got work for it. You're, you're paying a man. He's an expensive fellow that drives for it. He's an absolutely brilliant driver, but he's they're expensive to drivers. You know, no, nothing's cheap these days. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, let's talk about employing people. Yeah, you know, because that, that's oh. a that's a big topic as well. There's uh, people say that there's a real shortage of tradesmen out there right wow. now. I think that there is a shortage of tradesmen, but I think that it's going to be even bigger in ten years because today's twenty year olds, it's just a different work ethic. There's the social media. People want to be TikTok stars. People want to be YouTubers. Nobody want nobody dreams of being a paver, do they? I, no. See, the the problem with paving is, <coughs> I'll just give you an example. Um, we track the steps sometimes. My lads do twenty five thousand steps a day day sometimes you could be uh, moving 30 to 40 ton of stuff a day wheelbarrows you know all that sort of stuff so it's very very hard work yeah. it's, you have to be fit you know you have to be on the ball uh, with an attitude so what so what you do know? you look for when you're employing somebody they just basically have to have it you know you watch them for like, the first two like, weeks and yeah like you can't get them to be honest with you you know it's very hard to get a good paving contractor you know even even the subcontractors you know you can't even get them anymore you know we're, we're trying to employ someone at the moment and you can't get them 
you know, mm. where we are, we're so busy, but you just can't get, you can't get good lads with a good work ethic. They want to do, they want to do nothing and get paid. The young lads want to come in and just stand around and get paid as well. Mm. No one wants to work hard <coughs> like, like like it was years ago. Yeah. You know, and obviously just I'll tell, I'll tell you how we get people. I'm gonna tell you, and which is a good lesson for anybody who's listening who has problem with employing people. The moment we started uploading stuff onto Facebook and on TikTok and we went viral, it, regardless of which company I'm talking mm. about, especially with the roofing, we have a queue of good people waiting to get employed. For yeah. example, the last three guys that we've employed, they're Irish guys, right? And the third one just started with us from Monday. But the two of the, the previous one, David and Jason, they're extremely good, quality mm. guys. And they came by recommendations. They saw the social media and said, they said, well, this looks like a serious operation. I want to be a part of it. Yeah. So I'd say that if you're struggling with employees, I'd say get on the social media and make sure to build a big presence. Oh, we did, we did. Good grafters want to be a part of a good company. Mm. You can't employ good high quality people if you look like a donkey's arsehole you know, yeah. in, on yeah, Facebook. Exactly. You yeah, can't. Yeah. You just have to yeah. be professional. You have to look professional. You have to become high quality to attract high quality, mm. I think. Wouldn't I, that be right? I, I agree with you there. You know, and if, if you think about it, we really, all good tradesmen are working. So, yeah, you know, exactly. so to get someone to leave a company and come for you, there has to be a good package there in order for them. Good, good package you know and I mean? a vision and is good, to be sold as good well. Good work environment for them. You know, you know what I mean? But I, I have lads that are with me a long, long, long time and I, lo- I, I want to keep them lads. Now, I've lost a couple of lads in the last year, you know, I was disappointed about. But listen, that's 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 the way. Like, I've, I've, I've lads in, in where I live who have worked with me for, t- for years and years and years and have their own paving companies now. And, and hats off to them. There's two of them in my local. So there's three, there's three paving companies in my local area and they all worked with me years ago. But, you know, fair, fair play to them. Delight to see them... Get, um, try, try it himself. I that, love you know. that about you. you know, you're not looking that, at you know. them and you're not saying these fuckers. No, I try and help them. We offer them work. Yeah. You know, it's no problem. You know, we'd love to help And them. well done to you. Everybody you know. should be like you. People are usually grudging when somebody ah, leaves no. them and does their Jeez, own thing. No. And I do the same. If yeah. somebody decides to leave me mm. and do things for on their own, I'd almost help them and I pass some work to them. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, look, I'm not in. I they're not my competition. Mm. If if lad leave, so leaves me and starts to do his own thing, he is not my competition. Look, mm. I'm getting hospitals. I'm getting you're getting thousand pound yeah. jobs. How the hell is some new guy going to be competition to you? No, yeah. and you have to help. I think in life we have to help. No, I, I you, totally you can't receive something from the universe if you're not given anything. Yeah. <laughs> I oh, think that 100. Oh, it's like it's like when you're jobs, you, you, you never try and overcharge someone. Mm. If you overcharge someone, the universe isn't going to give you the next job. Mm. So when you go in there at a keen ray and honest ray about honesty and be honest with your customers, you know, you're going to get the job. You know, if you go in there, I love your bullshit. Yeah, this bullshit is exactly how I live customer, my life. <laughs> you bullshit a customer <coughs> going there bullshitting them and overcharging for this and overcharging for that you know the next job you're not going to get the next job if you look after you know and be well, honest you get the uh, jobs ok right I get all this but what about those people who drive around in a white van and they keep screwing people because there is companies like that I don't want to mention anybody there's a certain mm. let's say a group of people who do that stuff they walk mm. in they've t- they they t- start talking to the old lady they take five grand for oh, doing a bit of asphalt on the front way and they bounce after yeah. taking the deposit yeah. and I see that over and over again how do these people get jobs I wonder See, How, but, but like they're, they're going in there lowballing and, and they're going in putting pressure. I, I was told because I, I fix a lot of these jobs, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you, know, you I, would. I, yeah. I go back and fix it. jobs for people who who they done it. They walk in and they, they to allow people and they lowball them, say, I can do a whole driver for 500 euro. Customer goes, oh, yeah. And then they, they might dig a, a hole in the garden. Then they go back in and say, oh, we've run the problems here. We need another two thousand euro to fix it, and that's how they do it. You know, they trick trick the customers into doing it. It's it's absolutely disgraceful. So you know? yeah, so let's make a lesson from this to the yeah. people who are watching. Don't get screwed over when somebody's coming to do your job. Get them to show you at least three previous jobs, oh. and not three best jobs because they're gonna pick and choose. Yeah. Tell them to show you the three previous jobs that you did in the exact order going back, not three previous jobs that you did in over five years. Because so everybody has three jobs that they did right. Yeah. Show me three previous jobs. Like I, I agree with you because sometimes um, people ask me for photographs, and sometimes I say to the customer, "You should go and look at this job," because anyone could put photographs. Because we have people on our Facebook that are robbing our photographs and putting them on their page, and then we have to text them, "There, photographs." Oh, very sorry about that, and that's robbing our photographs, <laughs> robbing our stuff. I had that as put, well. Put them on the Facebook page to make themselves look good, <laughs> and then and then try to get jobs out of it. <laughs> so then I always say to people, sometimes I bring them and I show them jobs. The you know, TikTok is going to be good because I can do the videos of the TikTok, you can see it better, and now it's us. And where photographs, people can say, can show our photographs and, mm. say it, and pretend it's it's us, like mm. pretend it's them. You know what I mean? Mm. So. 
that's the way it goes, you know. Do you have any examples of when you went to price a job and you saw the absolute mess? You know, like how did somebody? Uh, basically, I want to give people some warning or how not to get screwed. You know, if you're getting job done. Right, I priced many a job and I get a phone call six months later. Oh, Chav, I remember you priced that job. Well, I decided I couldn't wait because we're we're booked up a couple of months in advance all the time. Mm. So there's some people don't want to wait this time, and that's fair enough. And the price could be good, but they say, I don't want to wait three months in the summer. And I'd say, right, and then they ring us 12 weeks later, can I have a look at this job? I'd go and have a look at the job. I'd walk in, and it'd be raining, and there'd be a big puddle of water outside the back door. You know, where the coast, the, the whoever came in, never put a proper drainage system in. They didn't the, level. They, they didn't, didn't level, put the waters, put them through the door. Or you have to come in then and, and put a new drainage system in. Or sometimes I can't, I say I, can't, I have to wait three more months to do it. And they just rip the whole thing out. And, and the job probably cost them five or six thousand, and they'd pay five or six thousand to refix it. You know, so, so cheap job always costs you uh, twice. Listen, you know, I, I try and avoid my customers on the best stuff to go for when I'm pricing the job. And some people haven't got the money for the best of the best. Some people only have the money for the for the for the middle of the road stuff, and that's fair enough. Do you know what I mean? But I'd, I'd never overcharge them or try. I'd always eat. sometimes we undercharge the job. So if you want something a little bit extra, we do it for them. Do you know what I mean? We mm. don't do it. We don't go. Oh yeah, I want two grand for an extra step. Or I'd always say I'll give you a free step. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I yeah. know exactly that you're you doing know, that because I, if you weren't doing that, you wouldn't be able to build such a big business no. on the word amount. No. Like you, like you know, different thing. If you have, like, I have five different websites for my roof, and I have this, I have yeah, that. Yeah. Everything comes through. But your business is completely different. It's all word of mouth at this stage, isn't yeah. it? Now you're moving into the videos, exactly. and that yeah, shows your yeah. customer service. The Facebook now was a big thing for us as well. You know, because Facebook really took off years and years ago and it gave us it gave us a lot, a lot of stuff but a lot of it is word of mouth you know what mm. I mean but especially in the in the big jobs we I do a lot of work for quantity surveyors they, they're the ones that give you the job so I know a lot, a lot of quantity surveyors and they move from company to company to company and then when they move to a new company they ring it and be the price this they will not forget me you know, we price so much work and don't get it as well because people are doing it, doing it out there doing it cheaper than us but we get an awful lot of work like we've got so much work at the moment it's just taking off and taking off and taking off it's like the recession is coming you say it's coming I'm here to try and re, um, you know to stop right so Trevor what is your pension plan let's say are you planning for the future or like what are you doing in terms of investing your money okay so good question Um, you know me and my brother have been saving me for many and many a year now and, and, and um, the company's doing well and so every year we give ourselves a good bonus at the end of the year you know and um, we give ourselves a good bonus so what we done is a few years ago like we went down to me put me put it again he's the expert at all this stuff he was on the research and he seen this house down in Wexford you know for you know I think it was 65,000 or something so we went down and had a look at it and there was problems with the plan and all so we said right we'll give you t I think it was 32,000 and he accepted it like you know oh, so right, he's got a house for 32 grand right so we did when it when was up. that when was that that was probably five years ago six years ago you know so that's not and, that long um, ago. so we d we done it up slowly and we got, we got borrowed a bit of money and got it done it up and have it rented out and you know we have a couple of them down there now as well and you know We've got a, a flat in Ashbourne there. I'm only at the boy in another house there, and with help with my partner, so I've got a good few properties there. And we have a we have a pension plan in place, like for years and years and years. We're paying into pensions, you know. So, so that kind of instead of wasting my money, um, I, we we had savings and got bonuses from, from the company at Christmas. We'd always invest it and in something, my boy, something. And we've always look. You know, he only rang me this morning. I swear to God, he rang me this morning. Where is this such a place in Wexford? And I said, I don't know. Because oh, I've seen a property down there. They're, they're looking for 80,000, but there's problems with it. So you might get it for, you might get it for 40 again. Mm. You know, all this sort of stuff. And that's the way he is. He, he's, he loves planning that stuff. So we have a, we have, um, a couple of properties there that we have rented out. And we're, 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 doing, we're doing good that way. A you question know? on the way you buy the property. Do you, do you buy them for cash? or do you? No, no. We we yeah we buy them for like obviously we the money be in our bank account from from the bonuses we get and the savings and we take it all out of our savings and we go down and we transfer the money in, into the estate agent. Oh and sorry, I didn't mean cash as a yeah, physical yeah, cash, yeah, but yeah. I didn't mean do you get a mortgage for them? Yeah, no, no, we no, no, didn't get a mortgage for them. We bought them out right because we were thirty thousand, so we bought them out right. You know, that's the way. That's the way to do it. You know, because you know, people think that if you, you know, people are into the property investment. But I think that you know, if you buy as many three-bedroom houses and you mortgage them, and then you rent them out to people, people said that there's money in it. I believe that there's a very little money in it if you exclude the price for fixing the house. You know, changing the bed, bed mattress. You know, changing the cooker when it breaks. Yeah, yeah. There's very little money in it on the long run. I think. Yeah. Wouldn't there be like you have to wait twenty years for your return? Exactly. So what well, we were lucky. We got we got them for very cheap. 
you know, and we went down and bought the, 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 the really, really dirtiest houses you can find because we knew we have all the trades material in place to, to help us deal them up, you know. And we had my dad was an investor among them and he helped us deal with What did your so dad do? My dad was a courier, but he actually works for Ashbourne Haven now. No way! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he, does, he just does a bit of driving here and there and just helps us out, you know what I mean? My dad does, you know, so... He's doing great. He's he's sixty eight now. You know what I mean. But he, and he was an investor he, as well, was he? He just he had money there, and um, he he helped us. You know, buy one of the properties in Wexford, gave us money towards it and all, and that sort of thing. So, we we have them that paid for and they're, 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 they're rented out now. You know, so it's grand. You know, mm. so it's good. So that's that's a that's kind of a that's an answer to your question about um the investments and the looking investment, after the future you know, yeah. the future you know so trevor how do you react to complaints let's say a client rings you and she or he says that she's not happy or he's not happy with the way things worked out and there's a big complaint they're not happy what do you do in that case so um sometimes it happens well look my, she, she happens but my, how my, you react my, my to it is what matters. Are human you know but the one thing I will say, and what the one value that Ashbourne Haven gives every customer is, no matter w- no matter what happens, no matter what happens, we will go back and fix your work. Do you know what I'm saying? And we stand by that. Now it might take us a couple of weeks. Now sometimes you get difficult customers, like we all do. And if the job doesn't go the way they think it's gonna go, no matter what you do, they're gonna give out about something. Mm-hmm. But ninety nine percent of our customers are happy. Mm. But there is that one percent every year that gives you a hard time. And yeah, but what you I, said there is you know, a key, key, key that everybody should learn from it. You know, always come back. Uh, Don't because Dublin, Ireland, but Dublin especially, everybody knows each other here. Yeah. If somebody doesn't know the other person, there is an auntie or a cousin who knows that person. So word spreads very quick, and it's a very easy to get a bad name for your company. Oh, we wouldn't even have one client that we did a bad job. The only as good as your last job. Yeah, and, and that's been honest with you. Now, now don't we get customers that ring us up and oh, I've been following you. Like the, the customer I'm now was a lovely woman, and she's a kind of a nervous woman, and she was really nervous about coming. Well, you know, oh, she's oh, I've been following you for for years on your page. No one else has placed this job but you. And I'm delighted you're here now. And and she was sound, and everything's going well. But as I said to you, sometimes people make mistakes. Like we have subcontractors sometimes that can do jobs for us, and we're on a job at the moment that um delayed it on a kind of a joy mix instead of a wet mix and the co- some of the slabs are moving we have to kind of fix it and the customer wasn't happy and that's fair enough but we're fixing it we're not leaving the product there and saying oh well that's 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 the way it goes yeah we go back and we take up and we fix and it happens you, you sometimes you get snags and you have to go back with a rock and slab or some grout comes out but we always fix it that's the key to success for me is going back and fixing everything that you're supposed to fix yeah. if you don't do it you know, that's when it's, a, that's it's when just a matter of time. It's like a domino effect. Yeah, it's just the, a matter of time before your effect. business goes down. It, uh, the domino effect. Of and downwards. people would be surprised how many people run from jobs. Like we come back to fix roof after some people and roofers are notorious for it. I don't know why, but in the roofing game, it's notorious. The people come to fix something, they can't find a leak and they jog, they bounce. Mm. And there's nothing that the homeowner can do because they can't bring them to court. There's no money in it. If somebody paid you two or three grand for something, you're not gonna bring them to court. Even the smile claims, yeah. it just it's just a headache, you know. Yeah, it's a headache. Yeah, you know? but those people will never achieve any achieve any greatness. No. They will not. They, they will never get to walk, you know. And, and I know, I know, personally of of companies that do it as well. That do jobs and might be paid might be someone else and they get leaks or whatever and they just don't go back and fix it where if we get a complaint or we go, we go back and we say to the customer very very sorry and sometimes we give them a voucher mm. sometimes we say this is the inconvenience and we give them a 200 euro voucher for, for a restaurant or something if there's, if you know if something goes wrong yeah that's a very you know, good 99% of our jobs go perfect but there is that 1% every year that just something just goes wrong and sometimes you just get unlucky and something happens and you know this is yeah. the way it goes you so, know I mean? so the lesson from this to anybody who's listening would be that if you get into the business or if you're already in business and something ever goes wrong even if it means that you're going to come back to the job and you're going to lose money on it which you probably will still do it still do it still do it it's worth it yeah. and i'll tell you a great story we did the job for a guy we did the flat roof and it came out and came out nasty had to be ripped apart by a different contractor it was when i was starting but the architect that was on the job i paid all the money back Mm. <laughs> I paid all the money back and then that architect saw me two years later on a different job he was involved in the project and he vouched for me he said yeah this is Lucas he'll always come back he's a sound lad yeah. you know he could have said no that Lucas fella will bounce as soon as something goes wrong but he didn't because I came back you know I, 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 I have I had this job in a suite it was and the big suite I'm on and there was a problem with the bricks and um, this architect came along 
and the engineer oh the engineer has, you had to be wrong because you're only a paving contractor this engineer has to be right and the engineer came and the bricks were measuring wrong and I said the job cannot be done this is the way it has to be done I had to change the bricks because the bricks were coming in too big and they didn't believe me so the contracts manager the owner of the company the architect the engineer came out in the end I was right and the same as that about a year later that architect seen me on the job and goes are you on this job he goes, yeah, and he got, and he gave me, he got a, uh, a quantity of air from his job he was on to ring me to do that job. And that's how it works, you yeah. know, because, you this know. Is, if, this is called war the mouth. It's called war I get the mouth. when I hear yeah. the stories. So it's like war that. the <laughs> mouth. That architect, there was a big massive meeting. And in the end, I was right, and I, I knew what I was talking about doing this year. So I knew it wasn't going to work, and I ended up right. And they were all sickened. But he spotted me then on a different job, and then got the QS that he was on the job to ring me, and I got that job. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying to you? You know, mm. and I, I've done jobs for all the all these all the houses and all that sort of stuff. But so you you end up getting jobs for the for the architects themselves yes, as well. Yes. But this there you there couldn't be any better business card you than know? this, you know? Yeah. Because you if know, those if man. those guys get you to do work on their yeah. house, that's yeah, how you man. know you're good. You know? <laughs> when you're good, you're good. And we used to do it for free. So what we used to do was we used to do we used to do like the contract managers' houses and all that. We used to do them for free. We don't do that anymore. But we used to years ago. We say, oh, we have to do this for free now because they're going to give us all the work, but. Listen, it doesn't work that place. way, I believe. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it's a myth. I yeah. used to do it as well yeah. a little bit. You know, you know, you yeah. try to. It's uh, nice to be nice. It's nice to be nice. But yeah. what we do now is we give maybe some a little bit discount or something. Yeah. You know, because uh, <laughs> the thing is, there's a big uh, da- a carrot dangling in place. People dangle carrots in front of you, and I don't listen to that anymore. When mm-hmm. somebody calls me and says, and I'm pricing a job, then they say, "Oh, will you do your best yeah. on this? We have another seven of these <laughs> lined up." We get that all the time. I see big ca- yeah, carrots, yeah. you know, and they're just trying. Look, I'm gonna have a tip for someone, right? And this is for any contractor out there: never be a yes man. If you, I was a yes man for years in the last boom, and I ended up in trouble because I had all these different lads on the jobs. Jobs are too big. And then I couldn't fulfill my requirements. So now what I do is I pick and choose the jobs I want because I have the men to do them. Because if I become a yes man again, I'll get all these big contracts and I'll have no men to do the bloody things. Yeah, you mentioned to and me... And that's a tip for you, someone. You mentioned, you know? That's a good tip. And it's you a mentioned, very important tip. You, you mentioned to me the offer that you got to do a big job in Amsterdam, big, yeah, big yeah, job, yeah. and you didn't take it we because didn't. you didn't feel like you are right for it right no, now. No, I mean, we so offered what's the, the contract point over it? there to have a look at it. We didn't even have a look at it. Don't, you know don't I mean? but take a bigger you bite know? that you can chew on. So what I'm trying that's to say the, for anyone out in business is, first of all, you have to have a work ethic. Mm. Like there's no tomorrow. But, uh, how do no. I, like, how do you people know? learn work ethic? If somebody's you know? listening to this and they are lazy little feck smoking splits and they want to yeah. become great, you know, where do you start? It's in our, it's in our, in, in ourself. Like I had it. So what I mean work ethic is while everyone else was going on the break five minutes early, I was still working. While they were finishing the break, I was back working. Mm. I was up before them. I'd finish after them. You know, I'd lay a lot more bricks than they would, even though they were on the same money as me. Yeah, exactly. That's a war getting for me. And people need to understand it. You, you know? People have this idea, oh, because he pays me this much and this much an hour and this yeah. guy gets the same, yeah. I'm going to do as much as him, never yeah. more. Ooh, yeah. no. Exactly so. God forbid doing something extra for free. But this is wrong. This yeah. is wrong. People should become great working for somebody yeah. else. Sweat their balls, be the best, and then move on to your own things and yeah, be great. Exactly. So a work ethic is the most important thing for me. You know what I mean? Honesty. If I get honest, you honesty. know what I mean you have to be honest with everyone, I love this you know? podcast I if love you don't, this podcast if you're not honest <laughs> you're not going to get anywhere and that's, that's being honest with you yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? honesty and you transparency know? in business is a key it, you know and your yeah, so work ethic is number one for me you know number two is honesty you know uh, and look, you have to be clever you have to be very very clever in business you know don't take too much on you know don't be a yes man when I was a yes man, we ended up in trouble with the job. So now we just pick and choose up yeah. there. And Maybe I'll, I'll give you a quick example. Yeah. I was working for this guy years ago and he would be taking, he would be doing extensions. But I was wondering, wondering why is he taking so many of them on? Because yeah. at one stage he had 15 extensions. Yeah, crazy. And he was just starting another one to pay the bills on the last one. Yeah. It was like a never ending spinning wheel Robin of Peter craziness. Robin Peter to PayPal. That's what he was doing, you know. Who? Robin Peter to PayPal is a saying in Ireland. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> because you're, you're starting one to pay for the next one. You know what? <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. So I, w- I would strongly you know. consider you know not doing that because yeah. it's a it's a recipe for a you know. failure. You know, and and you know, and it's another important thing about builders. Like you have to be getting paid. 
<laughs> do you do you a lot of I mean? work for builders? Yeah, we've got gangs every single day, twelve months of the year for builders. Every single day we have two or three. You know, big look around DCU. We're on Blackrock Clinic. We're in Clay Farm. I'm, I'm talking about the builders who build one of houses. Let's say. Yeah, we do them as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We do them as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any bad experience in or bad experience with those? Because a lot of people would say, make sure you get paid. Make sure you get paid. Have you? Do you get yeah. screwed much? Ah. Oh. In the recession, you're probably, you're just, probably, just before the recession, we were screwed three hundred and fifty thousand. You know, mm. and on one like, particular job. No, five or six different particular jobs. You mm. know, we're out fifty, sixty grand. And, we, and some of them we were supplying the stuff years ago, and you know, but they went, they went bang, and all that sort of stuff. But years later, like one contractor was a uh, hundred and fifty grand, I think it was. But in the years later, I think ten years later, all of a sudden, then they rang us again. Do you want to come back and work for us? And boy, I said, yeah. Mm. That's that was different times. They were in trouble. Everyone was in tr everyone was in trouble back then. There yeah. was no fucking work. Yeah. You now me took. I'm, I'm still was still working for them to this day. No way. Yeah, you know. So well, there you go. Don't burn your bridges. Don't burn your bridges. You know. You know. Because you never it's, know. And that's what I said about leaving quality work behind you and always coming back. Because you never know where you are gonna meet the other person. Ireland is so small. It's unbelievable. There's only yeah, four, like if you four and a half to five million people here. It's isn't tiny. There? If you go into a job, a side job, you know you're doing the real thing. If you go into a side job and you haven't got the experience lads and they make they make an absolute hames of the job you're not getting paid and that's just it so you have to make sure you, you have the good lads on the job and you have to get paid because mm. you don't get paid the money stops and, mm. and you're gone how do you train yeah. lads let's say you're employing somebody new and uh, is there any training involved or usually you're probably ex hiring people already with experience I'm tr I'm, i try and hire people with experience but most of the lads that are with me started from scratch they started on the on the low money and then on, on the good money. You know what mm. I mean? And, and look, I try and encourage lads to stay, learn the trade. I give them, I give them the own van, the own two lads to work in front of, and send them on their own jobs. That's the goal for lads working with me. You know, mm. being a team leader, basically. Being a team leader. And I have a few team leaders, but you know, I want more. Mm. You know. It's, it's what's your what's your plans for the business like you have seven vans on the road you have the truck we have, you have, we have four yard. vans on the road every single day you know we've one van in the yard there and then um, we have the truck like the goal for the business is to get the to get the big contracts mm. get the, recession proof your business mm. these five or six thousand pound jobs are, are, aren't any good for you you want to get the big ones where the, the million pound ones and the five hundred thousand yeah. ones and we're pricing a good few at the moment the good you know three and four hundred grand ones we're, we're pricing them at the moment for we work for all the biggest builders i don't want to mention any builders but yeah. we work for all the big with the biggest builders in Ireland. We, we do a bit of work yeah. big to work for them you know yeah. and the, the council work as well we're trying to get in there as well at the moment and council it's work it's hard is, to get in there yeah but council you know? work is uh is recession proof yeah pretty much, it's recession proof you know what i mean that's, that's what, what that's you what want trying to that's I'm, I'm not here to, to sound good uh, I'm here to try and so, you know, promote Ashbourne Paving and so mm. people will see that we're, 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 a, we're a good business mm. you know, and we're good good business to employers so if they give us a job you know we're going to get a job get a job do, do, doing good quality work quality cuts and on time mm. that's the key mm. we have we have limits people have PCs on jobs which means you have to have a certain done by a certain date so we have to have so many lads on that job to get mm. it done yeah. and sometimes it's difficult because it, you're getting held up and you know yourself on yeah. sites you know? Ju just to clear things out if any listeners are listening to us or watching and they want to hire you you do all the big commercial job couple yeah. of let's say million pound jobs but Whatever. you will also look after people with a normal house you have probably teams for that as well you don't you don't say no to small domestic jobs we no. do all we have yeah, well we that's what I want to say to people we do domestic jobs uh, the every day of the week yeah. you know, and people know that's us, what I wanted to say that. if anybody's yeah. watching and they were saying yeah. I'd love my cabin done but this guy sounds too big for me no, no, this is not the case no, the big lads too, still no, do no job is too big no job is too small yeah that's the what I wanted jobs to clear I love the personal small jobs going into someone's house meeting them and greeting them they're the jobs that I have all the lads on the sites and I kind of stick to them kind of jobs and meet everyone to meet the customers and I do all the pricing myself my brother does all the pricing himself so it's a real personal thing. My dad works in the company. My nephew works in the company, and I employ all the per all the people from my hometown. So I'm trying. To, like years ago, I, I, I'd say nearly every person in, in Ashbourne worked for me years ago. You know, when we when we we had, we had 36 lads years ago. You know, but so I try and employ local lads as well. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Trying to help, help, help them all. Yeah, help you know, the community. You know, yeah, that's what I try and do. I try and I'd rather take on all the. Look, most of the lads working for me are local. You know. 
Yeah. And it's handy as well, you know, yeah, because if handy. some if somebody lives in Slane and they have to do a job somewhere else, by the time we they get there, I actually have one fella who lives in Slane and cycles to Ashbourne every day. Oh no, he walked at me for years. Right, it's funny you say that. And now he's only back with me a few weeks, and he cycles from Slane to Ashbourne every no, day. How long does yeah. it take him? <laughs> an hour. That's all. An hour and five minutes. So he's willing to do it. He's probably fit as a fiddle, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's fit as a fiddle. You know. <laughs> right so I think we have it wrapped now we've received some great lessons here from Trevor from Ashburn Paven I'm sure whoever is listening to this you will be able to pick up something from it you know so thank you for coming Trevor no and I hopefully see you soon yeah, thank you see you soon thank you bye bye